This is the talk of Music City Real Estate. Welcome back to another episode of The Talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. My name is Monty Moore with Realty One Group Music City. Hey, and I'm Carrie Ann with CMG Financial and My Mortgage Team. Every week we'll be posting a new episode chock full of Nashville real estate value. Yes, and you can follow along and subscribe at talkmusiccity.com. Got questions for us? Ask away at questions at talkmusiccity.com. Welcome back. Welcome back, Monty. Welcome back, Carrie Ann. Welcome back, Jason Hoover. Hey, and how's it going? We, we have, have an awesome guest today. We do. I'm really excited about this guest. I am too. Talk about a relevant topic for real estate. That is the battle here. What's that called? The yeah. battle in the mind? Between the ears, Between they say, the right? ears, they say. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the greatest battleground. I've been saying that for decades. It's not about the interest rate. It's not about the who's running it for president. It's not about all these things that we might get bogged up with. It's all about winning the battle here. Yes, and we have the very talented uh, Lauren Weibert. She is a mindset coach. So uh, we're going to be talking all things mindset today. And she's got a great class, Thinking Into Results. I love that. So before Me we too. get started, welcome first, Miss Lauren. But before we get Thank started, you. we're going to tell you guys about our amazing sponsor. We're so very thankful for Music City Removal. They're the number one junk removal service in Nashville for residential commercial and construction. They're experts in ridding you of junk. Their costs include labor and dumping fees without any hidden or added expenses. Whether you need a full clean out or just one item removed, they have you covered. The Music City Removal Team knows the importance of respect and trust while in someone else's home. They understand the inconvenience of junk left behind by previous homeowners and tenants and are determined to provide an affordable and customer-focused junk removal service that puts you first. For a free on-site estimate, just go to musiccityremoval.com. That's musiccityremoval.com. Yes, Music City Removal, because clutter ain't cute. All right, so Miss Lauren <laughs> is with us. She just got a whiff of that. How fun. Uh-huh. Yes, the clutter is the clutter not cute, cute, right? Nor is clutter between the ears, right? Is that what we're talking about say, today? It's, it's kind of convenient that... They, the junk removal service is the sponsor today because that's kind of what I do. I help right. you remove remove the junk, the junk. I like that. Your two ears, and like you know design. it is crazy depending upon what time of year. I mean, our audience is real estate agents, so you know, last year it was. I don't know. Want to say it was an easy year? It was definitely a difficult year, but um, yeah. you knew you would, could be successful last year, right? So the the battle between the ears may have been for different reasons, but we are moving. There's a shift occurring, Ooh, right? The shift is crazy. There's, there is the. Yeah, am I, I going to make it? I don't think it? it's a shift anymore. I think we just fell off the edge. Yeah, we it's did. Already yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to- Ooh. Remember, you, you use that term all the time, pivoting. I th- our market just pivoted or shifted or I'm not sure what right. it did but talking to an appraiser yesterday and uh, he said that you know if if an appra- if you're getting about to get an a home appraised hopefully they have enough inventory and in the, uh, there are enough happenings in the last you know 30 days because it's so much different between just 30 60 days ago than what it was six months ago they're what's looking an appraisal? Six months, yeah, what's <laughs> I mean an appraisal? half of them are yeah. writing contracts you know without right yeah, so what absolutely. we're up against is a lot of battles and that may sometimes put us in a situation where we start to question ourselves right we let what's up here take a little bit more, more control and so we're really excited to have you with us Miss Lauren thank you so much why don't you share a little bit about yourself your background um you know what is a mindset coach you know that's such a unique title well shameless plug i would i would probably hire a mindset coach before you hire any other type of coach because it really impacts everything every area of life but for me personally um, grew up in st louis this is my second time in middle tennessee i do love it here it's a great hub and now i get to work from anywhere in the world, with anyone in the world, with a laptop, a phone, and an internet connection. Right. I am a former elementary school teacher. I've what an advantage to be a mindset coach, to be a former elementary school teacher. I said that's where she gets all of her patience, like because I couldn't do that. So. Don't worry, I only did it for three years. <laughs> but, but we're, we're, we're all we're all just. I mean, my my wife accuses me all the time of just being a twelve year old, you know, in an adult body. You know, we're all kids to some degree, I think. You know, and and, and come back sometimes maybe to that kid like belief and faith, maybe. It, part of your part of your ingredients I don't know that's it's a big deal but you know if you think about the person who's operating on you or flying your plane or selling your house or taking care of your mortgage we are really all just programmed 
to a certain degree. And most of that programming happened between the ages of zero to three years old. And then, you know, the rest of the programming happened during early childhood. So you're not too far off with that, mm. with that guess. Wow. So I come to you and you are going to break down all the chaos in my mind to what's happening. How, how do you help me work through all that? Most of my clients come to me because they are two things. Number one, they are growth focused. They really want more and better out of life, but also it's because they feel stuck. And the reason that they feel stuck is because they can feel themselves bumping up into that old programming, which only got them this far. Mm. And they know there's more and there's better out there, but they just don't know how to get to that next level. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe they have gotten to higher and higher levels of success, but they don't have a transferable system for their team. They're, they're doing everything blindly. You know, they know that they can get success, but they don't necessarily know how to transfer that. And so that's mm. why people end up working with me. I love that. You know, they, they say fear can be the most paralyzing for, for some of us. You know, mm -hmm. we, some of us may look like it comes natural, but, you know, some fear. And that all comes up through, you know, your mind. And, you right. know, you say you want to do this, but you find yourself never taking that first step, right? right. So you're somebody that helps us take that first step. Right. We, when I work with, together with people, we first identify a really amazing goal. It's not any type of goal that you've ever thought of before. You know, some people know what they want to do, but they never bring that into their 3D world. You know, it's locked up inside of their hearts. Other people... Can you, can you, I'm sorry, can you describe what a goal might be? Just so we... I've had people track sit with in front of me and tell me that they want to become an entrepreneur. They're used to being a W-2 employee or they want to write a book. They've had this book in I their did. heart mm -hmm. for 40, 50 years and they don't know how to do that or they're scared, like you said, mm -hmm. um, or they have this great invention they want to do or they want to do something philanthropic or they want, you know, kind of more of those intangible things like comfort, security, wealth, um, much better relationships. So I, the very first thing that we do when I work with my clients is help identify a true goal, not something, I know a lot of us, you know, success-minded individuals have heard of SMART goals before. Most of those letters in that acronym are great. I take issue with the word attainable because if you think of the amazing things that have happened to humanity, you know, a, a human being being in flight, that was not an attainable goal. Us walking around and having a computer on our wrists or in our hands and we can connect with anyone in the world at any time of day, that was not an attainable goal. So we work together to figure out what is it that you really, really want. You don't have to know how to do it. You just have to want it. That's the only qualifying mm. factor. Wow. And then we go from there. Wow. I love that. You know, the want is so key. I think sometimes there's dreams, in, you know, but the want of that dream, I think it's sometimes separate, you know. There's a lot of people there that want to be successful, but they don't want to work to get to the success. Right. Um, and they want to find that, you know, magic pill, which I still am, you know, when it comes to the, the, the weight concept of get fit, you know, concept. And, and a lot of people try to do that when it comes to sales, you know, and or um, the success that we have with real estate. I mean, the what got us here won't get us there. That's I keep right. saying that because we are in a different world, 2021. We thought we were in a different world in 2020. I mean, it's a totally different world now, right? Yeah. So even people that are out there listening, some people possibly had some traction last year, but then now they're they're backpedaling possibly because right. the shift has happened. Like you said, we've already jumped off the edge. Um, or there's other people that want to get into this business because we made it look so easy last year, right? <laughs> and so you see those people mm. possibly wanting to jump in, but they don't know if, you know. So um, share with us the top three things. You know, let's say we identify, and I love that because you're so true. People just kind of guess that they want to possibly, like you said, um, help a lot of families. Well, how many, right? right. Like, do you want to go after making so much money? Money, 
helping so many families or do you want to have so much um, pr- production and volume, right? Like I try to say, pick pick, pick a lane, right? What, what are you going after? But how, what would you say to the our audience here, maybe the top three things that, so let's say we did pick a true goal. How do you now organize my thoughts to help me direct myself towards that goal? I mean, the goal has got to be mind blowing, like something that scares you. Mm. That's that fear should be a part of the process. Ooh, okay. Also, so you keep circling back around to something really significant. Yeah. This isn't about losing two pounds or right. something like that. This, this is, is something not really... a five to 10% increase over what you produced last year. Mm-hmm. This is something that you really want. So whether it's helping families or earning money, you need to be very specific, like you said, how many families, how much money. And then once you get that specific with it and it's kind of scary, you need to tie some meaning to it. Um, you know, what are you gonna do with the money? Or what what will you do with the ability to have the type of network where you've helped 100 families over the course of 52 weeks? You know, what will that mean for you and your business for your own family? Um, tie meaning to it. You know, if, if I'm earning $70,000 a month, that means I can go on vacation whenever I want. But then we need to also tie some emotion to that goal because the money in and of itself is not ever going to be the motivating factor. It's how are you gonna feel when you're earning that much money every single month or more? Um, happiness, freedom, love, joy, you security. know, that, yeah, security, exactly. So, and then you always wanna phrase that goal in the present tense. So I like to use the writing prompt of, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning $70,000 a month so I can go on vacation whenever I want, take my family with me, and I feel so happy and free. That is the perfect goal because it's mine, it belongs to me. I have no idea exactly how I'm going to do that. And I know it's gonna be really amazing when that happens. But isn't having an idea how you're going to do that an important element so that it doesn't start working against you? Or is it just the power of that why or that power of that reason is going to... When people you? set goals that they have either already done or they think they can do, you know, something that they can tinker with. Well, if I reverse engineer this and I do this much more than I did last year, there's really no inspiration in that. It's got to come from your imagination, Mm -hmm. whatever that is. Um, That's what gives it the juice. Jason Hoover, you know, you know, you've done such an amazing job with our foundations class. And I know that you're I think your first class is all about learning to go from the W2 mindset to the entrepreneur mindset. 1099. uh, 1099 uh, mindset. Um, I mean, you entrepreneur mindset is where you're trying to go to. Right. So uh, I know you resonate with what she's talking about there. How deep do you go into that with our agents? Oh yeah, we dive deep uh, because we get into like the programming that she's talking about. Mm-hmm. We get into the um, uh, the results, being results oriented. And we also uh, talk about the, um, the pain points. You know, how bad does it hurt if you don't hit your goal? Because uh, that, that fuels a lot of people. Mm-hmm. is uh, it's great that you know hey you know i get to go on vacation get to do all this but really is it going to hurt hurt you because we're the first ones to think okay well uh, i didn't really need it need 70,000 you know i'm good with 20,000 well if it's impacting your kids oh wait a minute that's a different story you know i've already promised my kids hey we're going to disney world every single month you know, I'm just throwing stuff sure. out here, but now my kids that say, would be draining. That would be awful, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? One I'd, work, once every five I'd, work, years. I'd work hard to get to avoid that. <laughs> but but what if you tell your kids next month? Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I right. wasn't able to do it. Right. Your kids are you know going to call you a buzzkill. I had my son call me a buzzkill the other day. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, he's oh, that age. Kidding. How old yeah, is he? Eleven. Eleven. Uh, Eighteen. Uh, oh, <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So, because oh I, I wouldn't let you let him watch TV anyway, we're getting sidetracked here. Um, uh, but yes, yeah, so <laughs> definitely <laughs> we dive into all of that. Buzzkill. Um, you know, because we dive into the, uh, you know, the different, you know, we cover the, um, you know, the conscious, subconscious brains. 
and uh, how much that impacts your programming. Bingo. Uh, because we're always focused on the conscious when we really need to be worried about our info diet. And I dive into our info diet. Uh, so yeah, I mean, ab- absolutely. Uh, I'm resonating with the, all that she's saying here. Everything but, that he's saying is right. Yeah. The want though is so, it's like, you, do you really want it? You know, like that, that yeah. really, well, really, it's like, it's really like she was saying it. too. Right. And, you know, we always talk about money as our goal. Well, money is not the goal. I mean, we could, it's what the money we, can do. We, we can be, uh, you know, what is it? The ducks thing. What was that? What was that? Duck? We're, we're ducks? Ducktails. Okay. We could be, uh, <laughs> <laughs> quack, 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 quack. Yeah. Uh, duck uh, Scrooge. Who is it? Uncle, Uncle Scrooge? Uncle yeah. Scrooge. Yeah. Swimming in the got. money. Swimming in the money. Yeah. Swimming what good is it? Right. What good is it to have the money if it, 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 your goals are tied to what it does for you? Right. That's right. And um, so, I mean, like, again, you know, resonate exactly what she's saying because, I mean, yeah, hey, great. You know, $100,000. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Because every agent that comes in, so when we start talking about your goals, mm-hmm. I want to make 100000 Like, why? Because I want to help people. Well, you can help people in many different ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why 100? Because I never made 100. Okay. Is it going to hurt if you don't make 100? No. Is 90,000 okay? Yeah. Then that's not a good goal for you. Sure. It's not going to get you. So, Lauren, let's hurt. talk about that mm-hmm. for a second. I think he brings up a good point. Now, mm-hmm. it seems like you're being you're um, putting it out there to be a more of a positive attraction. He's saying what's the consequence of not achieving that is more of a maybe fear driven, not a fear driven, but a consequence driven. So are you looking at both sides of that? Or are you mainly looking at the positive benefit of that rather than what's going to happen? What are the consequences if you don't achieve that goal? I mean, everything to me, fear of, is, fear of loss is one of the greatest motivators yeah, in the world. It, it, that's true. I just tend to keep it more on the positive side. I mean, I have said, you know, I've, I've thrown out there the idea of the richest place in the world is the graveyard Yeah. because you take all these hopes and dreams with you and then you die. Yeah. Um, you know, so that concept is there, but when you're going after a goal and then you understand that fear is supposed to be part of the process and then you know what to do when you come up against that fear of, oh no, I let my kids down or, oh, I didn't hit my goal, whatever it is, when you can work with the fear instead of run away from it all the time or use it as a, you know, a way to whip yourself. It's a motivator. Yeah. I mean, it it can be, but Mm -hmm. if you understand that, hey, once I move past this fear, everything I want is on the other side of that, Mm -hmm. that's really powerful. Yeah, because everybody has different motivators, and uh, I'm sure you you probably use DISC test and all of that. Uh, As much as I love DISC, um, the the second most important is the motivator uh, assessment, is what is motivating you to be productive. Totally. And, um, you know, I always love to take the disc and the motivators together and combine that and see, okay, well, this is who you are and this is how you're going to be successful. Or, you know, what I love motivates that. You. So where do I take that class or that test? Um, I mean, I'm a reseller of it, but I'm sure there's other places. But I think the motivator test is huge. It's because, very huge. I mean, I'm motivated by money. I'm motivated by being number one. I'm motivated. Right. I'm not saying me, but I'm saying yeah, people you. could be. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> you know, but multiple different reasons of that motivation, which I think I, I love that. So because yeah. for me as a leader, I'm looking into disc tests. I go as far as animals. It's a little easier for me. You're, you're a lion, you're an otter, you're a golden retriever. And that's what I was going to ask you. It's interesting that you're bringing this up because I'm saying, what if that golden retriever, that personality, <laughs> <laughs> that personality is just passive. So it's like, ah, I didn't meet that goal. It's okay. Right? Like that personality is one that's like, it's okay if you didn't return my phone right. call. Right? Where I'm like, you know, like that we need to get on that, right? Type of thing. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> Mine said more like a Way gun. Go, Jim. That was, that was of but, um, talk about that a little bit. So, cause there's a lot of different personalities. There know, are. And not everybody, even though you would think the salesperson would fit perfectly in this certain box, the Enneagram box would be this, right? Or that disc test, you should be blank or you should be a lion of, of, you know, the, um, the otter you would think. Um, but explain how that works. So your self image or your personality is tied to your results, period. However, you know, you can gain a lot from learning about your personality, but that doesn't mean that you have to stay stuck there. 
So I've known people who have come to me and, you know, they get part of the way through this and we're talking about, you know, their self image. Oh, I like myself the way I am. I'm, I'm great. And then they'll come back a few weeks later. I'm still not getting what I want. I think I need to work on my self image. Yes, you do. So you can look at other traits and people and see, okay, I'm not like that about that person. You don't have to become that person, but you can borrow some of those things that you admire in others, the things that help that person get closer to where you want to be. You can always put that on, try it on for size and walk around with it. Mm -hmm. And I think too, you know, you have to go back to that person who's uh, the more passive person. Are they really that passive or did they really pick something Mm -hmm. that they truly wanted to go after? Someone challenged me a long time ago saying, why not? I mean, you've always made it here. Why can't you go there? Like, what's stopping you? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a person that's stopping you? Is it your own, you know, mindset that's stopping you? What is stopping you? And when you take that, um, you break that down a little bit, it's really interesting because you're like, well, I've always dreamt to do that, but I just never gave myself permission or thought I was worthy enough Mm. to allow myself the ability to go all the way, right? And so um, I think that's a big part of it too, giving yourself permission and understand you are worthy. Like who made so-and-so special enough to be the one that, you know, can can do more, help more, close more. Mm-hmm. You know, we just talked about another listing agent. That individual made a choice to not even live here and take over this city, right? What made that person have any, who, they're not any different, possibly That's have right. a little bit more income, you know, or, or um, financial power behind something, but that doesn't mean we can't, you know, type of thing. So do you go, when you're talking about being very clear on your goal, do, and I love what you're speaking about it and speak in the present, and you do this great in the mornings, um, not that I'm hanging out with you in the morning. That's not a little weird, but um, you know what I'm saying. You, I it's know you do. episode of the talk of music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You, I know you. Our Monday study. morning huddle call. Yes. No, your life, your savers. You talk about how you do your oh, yeah, morning routine. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. You know your affirmations. <laughs> yes. You know so silence affirmations. Yeah. You say, visualization. You, yes. Visual, like you have Exercise. to visualize yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes to all of that, and that goes back to. <laughs> Uh, I'm just CA. You never know what's going to come out of my mouth. The loose cannon on the team. Lord. I love it. Too many. Okay, so go with that. Mm-hmm. You have a question, I think, that possibly we're going to ask. Yeah. L- Lauren, are you? I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, so, out of curiosity, like uh, you, you've worked with some agents um, or are working with agents, what do you see are some of the common mindset issues with mm. them? Oh, that's a great question. A lot of times, for anyone, it comes with a I'm not good enough or I don't think I can, or, you know, just that, that sales mentality. Plus you have everybody else around that person. Well, did you sell anything today? Mm. You know, that's such a huge thing, but internally not a good place to be uh, flipping through either. If you got a lot of realtor friends, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just comparing, you know, so it's, it's that concept of what really are you saying to yourself in your head? Let's Mm -hmm. examine that you know, but most common would be the I'm not worthy thing. And I don't think anybody wakes up and looks in the mirror and goes, I'm not worthy. But they're telling themselves yeah, things that are similar to that throughout the day when they say, I can't, or it's never going to happen for me, or, you know, that person's special and I'm, I, I'll never be like that. I see I, a lot I, of We're going to start calling those uh, Wayne's World agents. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true. I mean, they, they do. I mean, I was at that place a time in my career where I looked at somebody and said, I'll never be that person. You know, there's something else though. We do certain things to get ourselves in the mindset. Sometimes literally, if I have to make a huge successful call and I want to win the call, I might walk around my building a couple times, right? Or if I know I want to be really in my power and my confidence, I might wear my power slacks and my four inch heels. No one else is gonna see them because we're on Zoom, but mm-hmm. it's got me in the game, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm ready, I'm right. ready, put me in coach. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, sometimes you have to get yourself built up, right? Mm-hmm. Because no one else is gonna do that, mm-hmm. right? And until you figure that out, but I'm not comparing anybody else. My, so it's like you're um, a horse, now I'm gone to being a horse. 
<laughs> with the blinders, right? Like yeah. there's a reason right. why they put the blinders on the horse. They don't want the horse to see the other horse, what they're doing, like, Arr! you know, what's going on? Like you right. stay in your lane and you stay super focused, yeah. you know, but you know where you're going. I, I don't, people are like, oh, do you know this lender? No, I don't actually know a lot of lenders because I've only stayed in my own lane right. and um, they know me. I went into a room the other day and more people knew me and I didn't know them. Mm. And it was a similar industry, right? Because I've just stayed focused, you know, on it. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get confused, like, oh, I'm supposed to look like her or act like him, mm. you know? Yep. Well, it, it comes from that concept. My mentor is Bob Proctor, and he says, you've got to be the star of your own show. So many people are walking around. Well, yes, we do. Acting like they're. <laughs> ah, welcome. <laughs> And here I am. I love it. Yeah. I'm writing that one down. I love Bob Proctor, by the way. Oh, he's he's amazing. I don't know him. I'm going to look him up. Oh, um, you don't know Bob Proctor? Best How'd you get this far? Best coach on the planet. Oh, yeah. see? I'm just making shit up. I just keep going forward. <laughs> <laughs> I just do. I'm like, that's where I want to go. Did I you say the S word? Oh. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm from New England. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. I, I've said worse words than that. Oh, I can't believe so that. So many Writing people down. are just so okay with being a supporting actor and they put everybody else in front of them. Be okay with being your own star of your own show. Yeah, it, when you are com be comfortable enough to stop being the backup singer and mm -hmm. having the courage to be the lead singer, mm -hmm. and that's what you need to do. I'm working with another lady right now and she tells me, Carrie Ann, I'm too fearful. I said, then here's my hand. Right. And I'm gonna yank you and you're gonna come and I'll help you. But you have to surround yourself with people that are comfortable with your you being successful, mm -hmm. right? And there's some of us that are ready to hand the torch over to others and excited, you know, to see people grow. You know, what do they say about the seed and the flower? You know, the flower's still gonna bloom around all the other flowers. Am I saying that wrong? What's the whole know. spring one? <laughs> I'm trying to We're gonna get back to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm going to look it up well, here. She did not know flowers come she, from seeds. She's, That's, uh, she's in rare form today, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> she's she loves that this. So, Lauren, tell, while she's looking I'm up, looking that, up that, that crazy, quote, hold on. Tell, tell, tell us <laughs> this. You know, so, you've, you've uh, let's say I reach out to you and say, hey, look, I'd, I, uh, I really want to get my mind straight. What can you do? You have a, I'm assuming you have a process, a protocol that you start walking somebody through. Can we talk a little bit about that? What, sure. is that, what does that look like? If you so I facilitate a program that Bob Proctor and Sandy Gallagher created. Okay. It's called Thinking Into Results. Oh, okay. Sounds just like it is. You, mm -hmm. you learn how to think. People ask me, what do you do? I teach people how to think. Um, but yes, we sit down, we do a consultation, we find out, are you ready to invest in yourself? Mm -hmm. Time, money, it takes both. Mm -hmm. Transformation doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. um, I do not do just one hour coaching sessions like a lot of coaches do. I do not do behavior modification. We are focusing only on your mindset and learning about how amazing the human mind is, the conscious, the subconscious mind, wow. and everything that's tied to it. So it all starts with, with that. I'm gonna be doing monthly webinars. I will happily let you know when that first one comes love, out. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about it. So a little yep. backstory here just for you, Carrie Ann, mm. is that Bob Proctor, uh, somebody gave him the uh, Think and Grow Rich book when he was like, he was a struggling fireman, um, I don't know, over 60 years ago. He's probably in his 80s now, isn't he? He will be 87 this summer. Yeah, incredible. Wow. Just an incredible man. Then as sharp as can be. He's read nonstop. I mean, he, every day he's reading Think and Grow Rich, and that's just the main thing he reads every day. He's still every got that, day. He's still got that original Think and Grow Rich that was given to wow. him. You know, and he's made that his life study. And the depth and the spaces and the places that that book has taken him is i mean he's been multi 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 millionaire for years and years and years just teaching out of that book because for those who don't know uh, napoleon hill spent 20 years creating that book mm -hmm. with no promises i mean i love the story behind napoleon hill obviously but i love this, the story with uh, bob proctor as well he's, yeah. he's a living example of what the th what the book think and grow rich can do for you someone asked me once isn't it exhausting to have to control your thoughts all the time and i said <laughs> Uh, like learning any new skill, it can be exhausting <laughs> like to learn it. Skill. But when I wasn't controlling my thoughts and I had no idea how powerful my mind was, I kept getting results that I didn't want. If you 
want to control your success, if you want success to become a system, a repeatable process, then you need to be focusing on your mindset, period. Long-term success too, you Mm -hmm. know, meaning consistency. Right. So you can reach that goal and then you fizzle just, out and right, never do anything right. cool ever again. Right. Yeah. And this is the goal at that point is to stay, to stay, right? right? To stay. P-T-F-A-R. Uh, P-T-F-A-R. Have you heard of that? No. So programming, it's all your conscious, subconscious programming. T is uh, your programming leads to your way of thinking, your thoughts. Your thoughts lead to how you feel about it. Mm. That's your feelings. You act upon your feelings. And then your actions equal results. your results. Results continue to program you, which continue to change your thoughts. So it's, it's a complete circle. I love that. I say that all the time, but I just have never heard the official name for it. Acronym. PT far. PT that's far. so good. PT but that's far. so true. We also cover that in foundations. Awesome. I need to, I need to uh, join you one of these days so I can get my foundations right. Yeah, you may learn something. I know I will learn something. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. Kidding. But no, you know I, what's I'll, interesting is that are you ready to learn it? I think we're at different stages too oh yeah. in our in our business. You know, I was doing a lot of volume in my career and I just thought I knew it all. And I re- wasn't, re- even though I wanted, I don't think I was ready to break open and do something bigger, you know? And I prob- you probably could have told me that and I wasn't accepting of that at right. the moment. And so anybody that's out there, if you really want to go to the next step, go to the next level, you know, when you start to take these training classes, you're going to absorb it so much differently mm-hmm. than you just taking the class, you know? Well, it's like reading a book over and over. They can go rich, you keep getting something out of it. Every right. Time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're a different person. I, I challenge everybody who's read Think and Grow Rich to read it again because today you are a different person than you were yesterday right. or 10 years ago or whenever the first time that you read it. You'll get something else out of that that <clears throat> will blow your mind that you didn't catch that before. Mm, that is exactly right. Somebody asked me, you know, why, why, Carrie Ann, you know, why do you have to make more money? And I was like, I don't think it's about that. I said, who knew my mom was going to get sick? Mm -hmm. I said, she can live the best life now and not have any expense on it. You know, Mm -hmm. there's a reason why sometimes what we do and what we're chasing Mm -hmm. is for not us, it's for others. Mm -hmm. And you, when you say you mature into it is, it makes me so joyful now to see the reaction of another and, and they wouldn't have that per se, if you weren't able to give it, right? And so it just gives you goosebumps. And that's that's the reason why you want to continue, you know, to make a difference. But to go back to the quote, I knew there was one. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody's hanging on the edge of their seat, by the way. Hey, a flower does not think of competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, Like, you don't ever assume, like, Mm -hmm. I'm competing against, you know, whoever. You just do. And I think when you do, you rise with with everybody, you know? And I think um, I'm excited when somebody else is doing better because guess what there is a healthy competition because yeah. mama's not going to actually let you win <laughs> so i am rising right like mm-hmm. i do more right. you know i mm-hmm. i sometimes you know see somebody did and i was oh my gosh how smart are they and i'm like <laughs> and i start and you have to start thinking differently and we talk yeah, about pivoting right, right. you know but the opposite you could let that eat at you and mm-hmm. what i now do because it was really bothering me and getting me down and there's some people that have the high highs and the low lows i'm one of those when i'm on my low low i have to really realize that that person's bought that's too much it's mm-hmm. giving me my pulse is going higher I've got anxiety so no longer are you part of me I don't see you anymore mm-hmm. I've had to remove you because that does cause some people serious anxiety when mm-hmm. it comes to all that you mm-hmm. know so keeping it straight here mm-hmm. and organized is is super key and if you need a little extra help we've got our friend here Miss Lauren mm-hmm. the mindset coach Lauren, if, that, if somebody before we forget to if somebody wants to reach out to you which I know there will be some real estate professionals I to would see love that, that that uh, I need to get my mind straight and I need to you know, explore this further. How do they get a hold of you? Email me at Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, at laurenwybert.com, W-E-I-B-E-R-T. Like why Bert? Like why Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's over here cracking jokes. So Lauren was telling me before and we phone, started the show. And yeah, phone number? Ahead. 563-340-3136. Say it one more time. Area code five six three three four zero three one three six. This is such an important uh, program because I just I put so much 
uh, credence in getting our minds straight. And mm-hmm. I, th- I think, and, and now knowing that you're basing a lot of your belief system on what you've learned from Bob Proctor, who learned from the master of, of uh, Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich, that only validates more than ever before, probably, um, somebody qualified for this venture. Because it's a venture. Yeah. It's an advent- adventure as well. You know, Lauren, before we got started, you, and this is really connected with me, she said it's only 5% strategy and 95% mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's huge. I mean, and I'm not putting any energy in making sure my mindset is squared away. If you really start to think about those numbers, right? Mm-hmm. What results can you have when you get your mindset squared away? So it's such a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Yes, we will see you next week. You've been listening to the talk of Music City Real Estate. <laughs>